Can I just start off this video by saying DJI nailed it, especially for people like myself who are looking to get into a more professional drone, but we don't have a ton of cash to spend on top of it. The new Mavic Air 2 from DJI is a perfect drone for that and does a really good job about bridging the gap from beginner over to professional. And in this video, we're gonna go through and talk about some of those features, so stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, let me introduce myself. I am Aaron from HellCloud and on this channel we do things like tech tips or unboxing and reviews just like this one. So if that is any of interest to you, consider subscribing. Now I'm pretty new to the drone world. I started off with the DJI Spark uh, just over a year ago and then eventually moved on to the Mavic Mini when it released, but never ended up getting rid of the Spark until now because of the lack of tracking features that the Mavic Mini didn't have. So fast forward today with the Mavic Air 2, I wanna talk about some of the main features that place the Mavic Air 2 for me in that middle ground between beginner and pro. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So starting with what is included in the box, I did of course opt for the Fly More Combo. It just makes more sense, especially if you know you're gonna be needing more than one battery because the base package will run you about 800 bucks. You get one battery, the controller, the drone, and three spare propellers versus if you can just go ahead and get the Fly More because you're gonna be out ahead as far as cost just because the Fly More gives you two additional batteries. It gives you three ND filters, a 16, 64, and a 256. You get the charging hub so you can charge all three batteries and then of course you're getting a power adapter that allows you to plug onto one of the batteries if you need to charge like your phone or the controller a little bit you can use some of the juice from the the one of the batteries itself and then of course you do get a really nice shoulder bag that you can use to carry the drone if you were to buy all of that stuff individually you're way over the thousand dollar mark so if you can i would just go ahead and recommend buying the fly more combo as it makes more sense as an upfront cost. Now the first major feature that I really think takes the Mavic Air 2 and puts it more into that professional realm is the ability to shoot photos or videos in a raw type of format and ultimately was a major deciding factor for me when purchasing this drone. So if you know anything about photo or video work or post-processing, you'll know that having that raw footage gives you greater flexibility so you can really go in and fine tune your footage and make sure that you're getting exactly what you're looking for. Now, of course, to swap it from normal to raw, you're gonna want to go into the settings, select JPEG plus DNG, which will give you a copy of both raw and JPEG. And then of course, for video, you will want to change over to video mode and then head into settings and swap it to decent alike. Now the next big feature that I've had a really good time playing around with is the focus track feature. And this essentially just takes your active track, your spotlight and your uh, point of interest and combines them into a single feature allowing you to select something on the screen. The drone will then automatically lock onto that subject and do what it can to keep it in frame but still allows manual control of the drone. To me, this allows you to focus more on what you want the shot to look like and the flight path that you want to fly rather than having to worry about keeping the drone centered on the subject. All of that's taken care of for you, so I've had a really good time or a really fun time playing with the focus track feature. Now, with that being said, you still need to keep an eye out on your surroundings because unlike the Mavic Pro, where it has full 360 degree detection, the Mavic Air 2 only has the front, the back, and the bottom to do any type of collision sensing. So you'll just wanna make sure that you've got your eyes on the surroundings and you're not gonna run into anything. Now, as far as flight times are concerned, DJI has rated the batteries at about 40 or 34 minutes max, but of course that's at sea level and with absolutely no wind conditions. However, in full sport mode and fighting about 10 and a half to 11 mile per hour winds at about 4,500 feet up, I was able to achieve about 18 minutes with getting closer and closer to the 30 minute mark, either using a normal mode or in the mixed mode. So the battery life on these things is actually really solid and having three or four batteries is definitely give you, giving you a ton of flight time to capture all of the shots that you're looking for. Now I will say the new controller design is absolutely amazing. I was skeptical at first, especially since it has the uh, internal antennas that the range wasn't gonna be very good, but overall the feeling of it in your hand is very solid. It feels a lot more solid than the Spark or the Mavic Mini. I haven't had a chance to try the Mavic Pros, but overall, I really love the new design, especially considering that the phone mount is now built into the top and the OTG cable now wraps around the side of it and then tucks away right underneath it like so. So having this was really good. If you look really closely, having the little rubber feet that have the channel grooves for you to run that OTG cable so you don't have to pinch it or anything like that through the phone clamp. It works really well. 
Moving the phone from the bottom to the top, I didn't think I was gonna really care for or really made a big difference to me, but in this case, it is way more like natural feeling to kind of look down and see the phone right there on the top of the controller versus looking at the very bottom and holding the controller up high. So having the new phone mounted at the top with the built-in mount is a very, very big step forward in my opinion. And then of course you do have the thumbsticks that do remove and they store on the bottom and they are metal, which is really nice and it does come with a spare set of them as well. And on the flip side of that, a big thing that I really liked as well is you can now have the OTG cable stored in here, but you also have a secondary port that you can use to charge the controller. So with this controller, I was able to achieve about 11,000 feet in distance, even with the integrated or internal antennas in an urban area, mind you. So definitely well over two miles in a single direction, and I had absolutely zero signal loss. So I am super amazed on how well they have built this and the battery inside is really well built as well because I've gone through all three batteries and then some, and I've still only used about 70 or about 25-30% uh, of the battery that's built into the controller. So this thing also has a ton of other features. Of course, you've got kind of like the droney or the selfie type of things, the quick shots. You've got hyperlapses. This thing does HDR video. It's got something called Smart Photo, which I haven't really dug too much in, but it allows you to optimize the light in low or highlight conditions for the photos. And then of course, one little trick or one little thing that I found out that it had was the landing light. Apparently they have these on like the Mavic Pros, but I didn't realize that they were even a thing, but it has a landing light so you can turn it on and off manually, but you can also have it set to automatic where once it dips below 15 feet, the light will kick on allowing it to uh, land a little bit better just because it lights up the area for the vision sensors. But on the flip side of that, you could then use that for like some still photography. If I wanted to do some like light, light painting with the drone, it could be super fun to do. So if you are a photographer or videographer and you're looking to kind of dip your toes into the drone world, I definitely highly recommend the Mavic Air 2. It's got a lot of great features in there and it doesn't have the more of the premium price tag. And it's kind of like the drone, at least for me, that it's like, it's filled the void. It's like a drone that I didn't know that I needed, but now that I have it, the void is kind of filled. But again, I've had it for just about a week and a half or so now, and I keep finding new things that I can play around with it, and just having a ton of fun flying this thing around and getting some really cool shots. And of course, if you can, pair that with the Mavic Mini, and you'll have yourself a sweet aerial arsenal when it comes to any type of aerial photography or videography. So anyways, guys, I will highly recommend it. I will post the affiliate links below for you guys to check out if you wanted to see any type of other specs or see what uh, kind of what the difference between the combos are, those links are gonna be right down there for you. And with that, that is going to wrap up this drone review. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I was able to help out with kind of like filtering out some of the decision making when it comes to snagging one of these guys. If so, be sure to give the video a big old thumbs up and a like, and also subscribe and ring the bell so you guys don't miss out on any type of future reviews. And we will see you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>